Now in this section we are going to uh, getting into some of the dynamic routing protocols. Uh, but before that, before we getting into complete uh, dynamic routing protocols, we'll try to understand what are the major advantages we get or major benefits we get uh, over static routing. Now you know static routing, static routing is something manually you have to configure the route for each and every destination. But the good thing in case of dynamic routing is we don't need to do those things. We don't need to manually add the routes. That's one of the major, major uh, benefit we get uh, with the dynamic routing protocols. Let's try to understand the, some of the advantages of the dynamic routing, why dynamic routing are most commonly used, why it is more preferred with some basic examples. So assume that you got some five different locations, A, B, C, D and E, and they all are connected like this. You got a connection from between them, something like this. Okay. Now probably to, to go from A to E, let's say the, the A is my source and E is my destination. And if you want to go from A to E, there are two possible routes. Either I can go via A, B, E, that is one possible route. I can go, or I can go via A, C, D, E. Okay, so there are two possible routes as, as you, know, you can see here, one is via this route and the other one is via this route. Now out of these two routes, which route is the best route? It depends upon the kind of the routing we are using. But if I'm using static routing, if I'm using static routing, the best route will be decided by the administrator. The best route is decided by the administrator. If I give the next stop address of B, always the traffic will go via B. If I give the next stop address of C, always the traffic will go via C. But again, you cannot write both static routes generally. Uh, we can write, but uh, we, we use only one route. So let's say if I'm going via B, all the traffic will go via B. Okay. So the, one of the major drawback is it's a manual configuration. But in case of dynamic routing, the administrator is not going to strike the static route or it's not going to tell the destination. Uh, and my router is going to come to know about router B, router E, router D, router C, all the remote networks automatically I'm going to learn through advertisements. So which means in case of static routing manually, the administrator has to tell about this network, then only the router A will come to know. But in case of dynamic routing, automatically the router is going to learn about the other networks dynamically. Dynamically. How it's going to do that? Through advertisements. So what it's going to do? It's going to do advertisements. So it's going to learn about the other networks through advertisements. So every router is going to advertise their own networks like uh, router A is going to advertise its own information to router B. Which means the router B knows about already B. And it also knows about A information. Now what it is going to do is it is going to pass on that information to the next router and the router E knows about E already and it also knows about A and E and then it will again pass on the information to the next routers. So same way uh, this side also uh, C knows about C already and it's A also and then from here it will pass on to C, A, D something like this and it will pass on to this to the next router C A D information to the next router. Now in this example now router E is going to learn about the A information from this side as well as this side. So both the sides it is learning the information which means the router E will come to know that to reach this network there are two possible routes. This is the first route, this is the second route. And then the router E is going to select any one as the best route based on some calculations like bandwidth, delay or hop counts in case of RIP. We'll get into that individual specific protocols. It's going to select any one as a best route. So which means the router is going to learn about the A network from all the possible routes and then it's going to see, it's going to decide any one as a best route and it is communicating with A dynamically. And in case due to some reason the best route goes down Let's say this is the best route and this best route is down. So the router E also know about to reach A, there is one more route. So it's communicating automatically from this side without any delay, which means if your best route is down, it's going to use the second best route and it is going to forward the traffic via second best route dynamically. So which means uh, in case of static routing, whatever the route given by the administrator, it will use that route. If that route fails, manually administrator has to change the route. 
but in case of dynamic routing it's going to happen automatically so this is one of the major benefit uh, major advantage we get uh, with case of dynamic routing that makes your dynamic routing more scalable for big size networks so if you're running a very big size networks we don't need to bother about the destination network because I'm going to learn about that destination networks automatically through advertisements okay I don't need to bother about how many possible routes are there and what's the next stop because automatically I'm receiving the network information from the neighbors so that makes dynamic routing a more scalable and more commonly used when you compare with static routing so let's try to summarize the points it works based on advertisements like Every router has to advertise their own networks. Like router A is going to advertise the, its own networks to router B, and the router B will advertise the information to router C, and the C advertise information to router B, D like that it will go on. So here we don't need to bother about the destination networks because uh, I'm going to learn about this network dynamically through, uh, through some dynamic routing protocols. Update the changes dynamically. Uh, as I said, if you have two routes, it's going to select anyone as a best route and if that route fails it's going to use the second best route automatically without administrator involved in the process and then that makes a little bit less administrative task because administrator has very less thing to do he just need to configure the protocols we call them as routing protocols and then he has to leave because the best route will be calculated by the router and if that best route fails it will automatically use the second best route uh, automatically so so that that's a good thing administrative task is reduced applicable for the big uh, big size networks even if you have some hundreds of routers 200 of branches we can use dynamic routing because here uh, administrative task is very much reduced here and how how the routers are going to come to know because they exchange some of the information we call them as routing information and automatically select the best route and build the routing table automatically so that's one of the major major difference when it comes to static routing and and dynamic routing so in case of dynamic routing automatically it is going to select the best route if that best route fails automatically uses the second best route so we don't need to bother about the destination network id what is destination network id if you don't know no problem you're going to learn about that network via advertisements so that that makes static that makes dynamic routing um, or more commonly used and this entire process is done by the router with the help of some protocols we call them as dynamic routing protocols okay so the routing protocols like RIP EHRP OSPF so we'll be getting into that individual protocols how they work how they view how they behave uh, more in detail uh, generally but uh, this is one of the major advantage so probably we have some more things to discuss like we'll be getting into more in detail on the different categories of the protocols and then uh, each and every protocol one by one more in detail in our next sections.